look back. So I look back and the pit's on my ass. Run, damn it, on your ass, boy. Jesus, save me. Dogs are a man's best friend. Your day one homie. Loyal until the day you die. Not even your best friend is that loyal. Oh, you just had a bad day? No problem, my guy. Dogs are there to cheer you up. See, dogs feel your emotions. When you're down, they're down. When you're not getting play, they not getting play. And they'll do whatever it takes to bring you back up. But now, hood dogs are different, different. See, white people are about that dog life. First thing first, dogs are like a family member to them. They live inside the house, they sleep on their beds, eat on their plate, even go as far as kissing them on their mouth. Mm, mm, mm. But black people, they on some other sh See, black people, especially Africans, get dogs for one reason, and that reason is protection. Oh, sh I think somebody's breaking in. Get on murder. That's why every time you ride through your local hood, you don't see black people walking around with golden retrievers all lives. Oh no, no, my guy. Niggas love pit bulls, Rottweilers, German Shepherds, dogs that'll kill you, my boy. Well, maybe it has something to do with the part that you're living in a crime fest area, but that's not the point. See, most hood neighborhoods, dogs are mainly used for security purposes. Sure, there's a whole dog fighting thing, but that's neither here nor there. Now, just like most people, I love dogs. Love their loyalty, love their courage, love their affection. But what I can't do is the whole dog in the house thing. Mm -mm. Trust me, been there, done that. I once bought a cute little puppy, fed it, trained it, and kicked that nigga out. Hell nah, that ain't for me, dawg. So for this story, I'ma take you back, back to my middle ages. So one day I was playing football, oh, I mean, American football for everybody else. Now, football is a straightforward sport, a game that can be easily played by as few as two people. One person throws the ball while the other catches it. Now, on this particular play, my homie Lem was playing receiver, and I, the quarterback. All right, Lem, you ready? Go deep. I got you, kid. So Lem goes deep. I throw the ball as hard as I could. The ball goes up, and the ball keeps going. And going. And going. Oh, no, 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 no. Not Miss Betsy's house. Damn. Ball falls right in Miss Betsy's yard. Damn. Now I got to go ask me and ask Miss Betsy for the ball. So I walk over to the front door, ring the doorbell, wait a few moments, but nobody answers. So I knock on the door. Miss Betsy, are you home? But still, nobody answers. Damn, I guess nobody's home. Now since no one was at the crib and your boy wasn't done playing football, I only had one option, to hop over the fence and fetch the ball. All right, Lem, since you didn't catch the ball, I think you should go get it. Nah, kid, you threw the ball, you go get it. Now we have a problem. See, Miss Betsy had a precious dog, a killer dog, if you might ask, a mean, oversized, angry American pit bull. Now for those of you who don't know, Pit bulls are known for their muscular build and they're often associated with ferocity. Oh, please believe no one in the neighborhood will dare walk up to Miss Betsy's yard without her permission. And since Miss Betsy wasn't home, we started pondering. Come on, Tim. Think. How we gonna get the ball back? Man, I hope Tim ain't thinking about hopping that fence. So after a while, it finally hit. See, the plan was calculated. All we had to do is assign one person to distract the dog while the other climbs the fence, enters the yard, retrieves the football, and gets out before the pit sees him. Easy, right? What could go wrong? Now came problem number two. Who's going to fetch the ball? Now, since we didn't have any way to choose, we decided it was only fair that we let God choose the lucky winner. So to keep it fair, we decided to play rock, paper, scissors. Now for the uninitiated, rock, paper, scissors is a hand game usually played between two people in which each player simultaneously forms one of three shapes, a rock, a paper, or a scissor. Now in order to win, you must defeat the other opponent by winning two out of three hands. Okay, let me ready? Ready. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Damn, you got me. All right, Tim, he went for the rock first. This nigga gets straight ass, my guy. So he's definitely not going to do that again. So go for the scissors again this time. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Damn, Tim, you stupid. 
flip it. You lost again. <laughs> Looks like you gotta fetch the ball, kid. Okay, just stay cool and wait for the dog to look the other way and just dip. Please, God, let this work. So, Lem goes first. He gets close to the dog and starts distracting him by yelling at the dog. Here, doggy, doggy, doggy. Bad punk ass doggy. <laughs> Bet you can't hop the fence, little All right, cool. I think the dog's not looking. It's time to go in. So I jump the fence and start walking towards the ball. Now this is where Lem messed up. See, while yelling at the dog, Lem decides he needs to step it up a notch. So he gets down, picks up the rock, and hits the dog right in the face. Oh, damn. All I remember hearing was, Oh, I'm fucked. So I got two options. Either run towards the fence and try my hardest to outrun this dog. I mean, I am black. Or sit there, fight the dog like a G. So my guy, I'm gonna ask you one more time. What would you do? Tim, run! Now you gotta remember, this wasn't a 10 foot dash. Oh no, my guy, we are talking a half an acre yard. So I started gunning, running as hard as my feet could go. Don't look back, don't look back, don't look back. Now, anytime your mind thinks don't look back, guess what's the first thing your mind does? Look back. So I look back and the pit's on my ass. Run, damn it, on your ass, boy. Jesus, save me! Then I see the fence right in front of me, and I knew I'ma have to go for the jump. So I set my feet, got ready for the dive, and nigga, this dog jumps straight on me and bites the shit off my leg. Ah! Damn, Tim, that was crazy, my boy. That pit almost got you. He did get me, fool. Oh, thank God I had my thick jeans on. Damn, you might need a tetanus shot or something. This is your fault. My fault? You the one who threw the ball. You're supposed to distract the dog. Oh yeah, my bad dog. I just had to throw that rock to see what he'll do. Now I'm steaming. See, this was Lamb's fault. My man's had one job. All he had to do was distract the dog while I fetched the ball. Oh, it's on sight now. You gotta admit, that was funny, dog. Man, you ran like a bitch. So, moral of the story. Being brave isn't the absence of fear. Being brave is having that fear, but finding a way through it. What's up, world? Thank you for joining your boy for another video. Woohoo! And stay away from the violent dogs, my guy! And if you've ever been chased or bit by a dog, put it in the comments. I would love to hear your story. Now let's get straight to the shout out. This week's first shout out goes to my man, Jalen. What's up, young king? Oh, I see you fam doing your thing all over IG. Okay, follow the kid on IG as Jalen D. Martin. Keep doing your thing fam. Second shout out goes to my girl, Queen E. Summer. What's up? Okay, we got a blogger and a YouTuber in the building. And she got a nice following too. Okay, follow the queen on IG as America Jones 2121 and on YouTube as Queen E Summer. Keep doing your thing, girl. Last shout out goes to my guy, Jay. What's up, kid? Okay, I say your cheetah is within you. Okay, <laughs> I feel you, fam. Follow the kid on IG as I think I'm lost it. Keep doing your thing, bro. If you want a chance to win a shout out, subscribe to the channel, follow your boy on IG, and send me that screenshot. As always, live timeless.